Hey everyone, it's Alex here with The Code Wolf, and in this series, we're going to explore what's new with ASP.NET Core 7. .NET 7 is an exciting new annual release from Microsoft, so let's check out what it has to offer. So in this video, we want to specifically talk about Blazor, which has received some updates in .NET 7. Now, .NET 5 and 6 were pretty substantial releases for the platform, and so Blazor received huge updates in those versions. .NET 7 is not a long-term support release uh, for .NET. Those only come every other year. So this year we get a bit more of an iterative or smaller update. And so Blazor does have a few interesting new features, but it's not quite to the scale that we've seen in the last few years. Still, let's check out what it has to offer since some of them are pretty interesting. So the first new feature of Blazor we can see if we head over to Visual Studio and then go up to File, New Project. Blazor now includes some empty templates for us to start with. So if I were to search for Blazor, we still have the same templates that we've always had for server and WebAssembly. But if we were to scroll down, now we have these empty versions of those same templates. So if you remember, Blazor historically, you always had to create a template that included a lot of boilerplate code with it. So it would come with a few pages that would demonstrate what Blazor could do, such as an in-browser uh, counter clicker or a page to fetch data using um, a request and just some basic styling and HTML navigation and so on. It could be kind of annoying to have to tear all of that out every time you'd start a new project. So now we have these nice new empty templates. And we can see what those look like if I just click through here to create a new project. And right now I'm still running the preview version of .NET 7, but this should be consistent um, with the full release as well if um, you're watching this after it's come out. So I'll click Create and give Visual Studio a moment to think about that. And when our new template opens up, now inside the pages folder, we only have this index.razor component. We used to have a few different templates in here that most people just didn't end up using in their projects. So it's nice that now we just have this simple hello world message and other parts of the project have been streamlined as well. So if you're starting out on some new projects, this might be really useful to you because you don't have to undo someone else's work. Now the next new feature of Blazor, we can look at by going over to a more complete project. So I've created this little sample app to walk through a few examples to show off these new features. The first one we can see if we actually just start up the app. When this launches in the browser, you can see we have this new loading screen that actually shows a progress bar and just looks a little bit nicer. Previously, we just had that awkward text in the upper left of the screen that would say loading dot 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 in plain browser text, and it was not very attractive. So a lot of developers would have to do work to replace that themselves but now we have a nicer one out of the box. So now I have the simple app running in the browser and the next feature we want to look at is the bind after attribute. And I'll just arrange these windows a little better so we can work through um, an example here. So the way that this app works is if I were to search for a term or a user or an organization, it will bring back the repositories for them in GitHub. GitHub has a pretty nice public REST API, and I encourage you to check it out and experiment with it if you haven't already. So these are all the different repositories under the .NET username or organization. So the way this works is that over on the left, we have this uh, input HTML element, and we have the usual Blazor binding suspects. So we have the, the bind and the bind event attributes, and those will take care of binding whatever value the user enters into our search box, to this search text field, which we can then use throughout our component for whatever purpose. Now, the new feature here is this bind after attribute. This allows us to bind a method on our component, and that method will get run every time the search text binding updates. So as we type in our box, that method will keep firing. This can be useful for all kinds of scenarios where we want to respond to user input or user actions right after they do something that updates a binding. So in this case, every time they search, we'll go out to GitHub and try and get the repositories that they're looking for. Now I did add uh, a line of text in here that makes sure that they've entered at least four characters before we start running searches, just to cut down on some of the request spam. Uh, but let's set a couple breakpoints here and just see how this works. So if I were to change this to search for Microsoft or something, as soon as I type M, you can see we hit our first breakpoint 
but right now our search text length is still only one since we've only entered one character. And so it won't try to make our request. So I'll hit continue and just remove that breakpoint. But if I were to keep typing and go up to you know five or six characters, as soon as I hit that fifth character, we do land in our try block. And that's because that get repos method is firing every time our value in the input box updates. So I'll remove this as well and click continue. And apparently there is um, a user named Micro, but I'll just change this to Microsoft. And you can see we get a new set of repos and our bind after attribute is firing as expected. So this can be a really useful feature when you're building UIs. So just have some fun and play around with that and see how and see what you can do with it. Now the next feature we want to look at deals with navigation and history. So in Blazor, we can programmatically navigate between pages. So over on the right, I have this button that says go to history, and this is going to take us to a different page in our app that will display some history data. So we can see that button is up here at the top, and the on click is bound to this navigate method. Well, the navigate method lives down at the end of our component here. And here we're using the built-in navigation manager to navigate to the history state page. And there's nothing new here, but now we have this new parameter called navigate options or navigation options. And this lets us add some history entry state along with that. So we can pass along a basic string or value to that other page. So if I were to click go to history, you can see this page says my state, just like we passed along. And the component for this page is really simple. So there's just this paragraph that says the history says, and then it displays the state property. And the state property is updated from that navigation manager's history entry state when the page loads. So if you ever need to pass around some basic data between your pages, you can now do that with this feature. The last new feature that we want to look at is the new Blazor Quick Grid. So under our navigation, if I were to go to this Quick Grid page, you can see this displays a basic grid of um, all the repositories, in this case for my username. And this is just hard coded since we don't have our search, but it's to show that we can pass this new quick grid element. Um, we can pass it a set of data um, using the items provider attribute here, and it will display that in a nice grid. So you can see that the items provider is tied to this grid items provider um, field down here, and we just provide a type parameter for whatever data type we're working with. In this case, it's a GitHub repo. Um, so I just created this class that has a name and a description and a URL. So when the page loads, we can update that repo provider by going out to GitHub with another request. Um, this time I've just hard coded it to my username, um, but that will bring back the results. And then we just return a grid items provider result and pass in that response data and the number of items. And this new element will just handle updating all that on the page for us and creating this new grid using columns and so on. Now, the reason we have to pass in the count is because this grid actually supports a huge number of features that I'm not gonna get into all of them right now, um, but you can go out to uh, the quick grid documentation and like I said, this actually supports a wide variety of features. So we have sorting and filtering and paging and virtualization. And this is actually a pretty powerful grid if you really get into it. Now, in my opinion, this is sort of a strange addition to Blazor. Um, this grid is not as fully featured as something like Mud Blazor or full third-party packages that are designed to build really robust and fancy UIs but it is still much more powerful than just a built-in table or some of the default HTML and Blazor components that we've had before. So I'm not really sure where this is gonna go. Um, this is currently considered a preview feature that may or may not become part of uh, the official Blazor framework in future.net versions. So it'll be interesting to see where this goes, but I just want you to be aware of this so that you can tinker around with it and see everything that it has to offer. And that really wraps it up for the most part for Blazor. Uh, there's a, there are some internal optimizations for performance and some minor bug fixes around virtualization and things like that. But again, this is more of an iterative small release. Um, so feel free to go check out .NET 7 and have fun with some of these new features. I'll be, of course, following up with updates to the other parts of ASP.NET Core in other videos, such as all the changes to minimal APIs and MVC and Razor pages and all that goodness another time. So please hit subscribe if you like this video, and I'll see you next time right here at the Code Wolf.